Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for V. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a break. April 8th, T with Gary V. Friday. Hope everybody's super well. Let's get right into it, Dustin. I've, uh, I've, uh, I'm ready to go. What's up, Gary? What's good, Flawless? How you doing, man? Super well. Man, it's an honor to talk to you, brother. Thank you, my man. Absolutely. So what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit of, was a little bit about the future of music and gaming being one and the same. And I've been noticing a lot of changes in the way the industry's been moving. Uh, I've seen that recently um, Travis Scott just did a live concert on Fortnite. Put out Put out a song with Kid Cudi. Next day, the song's number one. So I'm starting to see the shift in the way that artists are not only promoting their music, but the platforms that they're using. You know, how do you feel about the way that, that that's, that's elevating? Trav and his people are fucking smart. Like, this has always been the game. The reason, you, I mean, not the reason, but like the biggest reason that Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna are on the pedestals they are in the in music world is because of MTV. Not just because they were talented as fuck. You know, and, and so what Travis is doing is the best artists in the world always understand attention, right? And mm-hmm. so wherever there's the attention is where people go. And Trav just understands that if he goes and throws a virtual concert on Fortnite, you know, he's gonna have millions of eyeballs, right? It's the reason, big shout out right now to the Twitch fam, right? Like I'm streaming on Twitch yeah. right now and it's going crazy because that's where the attention is. And the attention's on TikTok, and believe it or not, the attention's on LinkedIn, and the attention's on Spotify. Like, this is one big fucking game of go to where the attention is. And if tomorrow, Juga Juga comes out, the <laughs> app, like every artist and every entrepreneur needs to go there because if that becomes the attention grab, and when it goes away, people are always like, Gary Vee, but that's what you said about Vine. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking went, put in work on Vine. So, did, you know, King Batch made his career on Vine. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, like, yes, that's exactly right. Some shows on TV have three season when it's the hottest thing and some things are Saturday Night Live. And whether it's three years, three months, or 16 years, I don't give a fuck how long the platform's hot. But yes, if video games are culture now. Like video games are now like sports, are now like music, are now like movies. It's forever now, forever, forever. And so for the rest of your life, video games will matter and grow and six year olds now dream to be professional gamers. It's the reason I dropped seven figures on a piece of the fucking Call of Duty Minnesota rocker team. Like it's here, period, end of story. And every single artist in the world should be streaming on Twitch. Every mm. single artist in the world should be streaming on Twitch and should be on YouTube games and should be fucking go mixer and should be going at it. I think it's crazy to see where we're going as a world. I mean, so many young kids aspire to be Twitch, you know, streamers and gamers and artists. I'm interested to in know where the doctors are going to come from in the future because everybody's, you don't, know, don't don't sleep on humans. We adjust. Yeah. Don't sleep on humans. We adjust. Like this, the amount of video game play is not gonna hurt anybody. Like, like it will hurt a point oh oh one percent. Like, our thumbs will be fine, or they won't. But guess what? We slouch because we sit too much. Like, you can't even imagine how fucked up you are from sitting. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? No. <laughs> so what, are we, what are we gonna ban sitting? I promise you, sitting fucks up people more for the doctor than video games. <laughs> and so we need to be more thoughtful about that shit. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely changing, man. I think um, the way that the video games are being, you know, in the in the culture, the way they're dominating so much, it's it's really forcing other industries to use video games as platforms. I mean, it's almost oh. like the new distributor. You know, it's been, it's yeah. been. When Justin TV switched to Twitch, you know, I remember having those conversations with those guys. They're like, "This is gonna fucking win." It, it videos, it's been. Because That's my crazy. generation now kind of is emerging to rule the world. This is what happens. Eventually, a generation becomes the 40, 50, 60, 70 year olds. Why do you think fucking everyone's so casual as a business man and woman dressing now? Because we grew up in hip hop emerging culture. We grew up in grunge. We grew up in not giving a fuck. And so like that's, that becomes the establishment. Absolutely. You know, just like just like all these incredible trends from transgen and fucking alternative, like they men's makeup, that's gonna be the fucking jam in 25 years when those kids run shit. Yeah, it's true, it's true. And so because we run shit and we're the Nintendo and Atari generation, it fucking, 
It just, it's just, it's how it works. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I'm definitely late to the party then because I'm noticing it now and I'm seeing it And shift early, now. and early. Yeah. Okay. People, everybody here who's watching right now feels late to the party on TikTok if they haven't jumped because I've been screaming about it for 18 months and if they jump right this second today, they'll be fucking early. Yeah, I jumped a few weeks ago and I'm, I'm building it tremendously. I mean, it's, it's a great platform for sure. How many followers you got? Uh, I got about 35, 40,000 in a matter in, of like two weeks. In a second, in yeah, a second. Yeah. How, many, how many times a day are you posting? Uh, once or twice a day, I'm trying to get one or two TikToks in a day. More? More. Wow. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just, you know, back to watch what I do. I'm about to go to five a day. Literally last night at like midnight, typed my team and said we're going to five. As an artist, right, who's, who's always constantly promoting music, promoting product, promoting merchandise, do you think there's ever too much posting? Do you think there's too nope. much of, nope. of the promoting of the product or you think it's go promoting. time all the time? No, no, I think there's not too much posting, but I think four out of those five need to be valuable for them. Mm. And then, a, I, and then I, one I, that, that kind of promotes I, to them. I wrote a book in 2011 called Jab, 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 Right Hook, and it was about jabs are given to the audience. I see you flip, fuck you too. Um, you know, jabs, jabs are give, 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 and then the fifth one is ask. So I think too many people promote too much. If you look at my Instagram, it's like give, 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 and then it's like, you know, subscribe to my Twitch. Mm. Give, 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 subscribe to my podcast. Give, 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 give. sign up for wine text. So you gotta get your balance right, it's like a fighter. Yeah. If, you're th- if you're throwing a right hook every fucking punch, I'm gonna duck. Okay. Got it? Because, yeah. Because an artist like me who's independent, I've been independent since 2010. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, the smallest uh, state in the country. I packed all my shit in 2010, moved to Atlanta, Georgia with no plan, well, HD you, camera, you knew and where you made had it to happen. Be. Yeah, absolutely. You, and Keep I've pushing. been been touring ever since and doing my thing, and uh, I appreciate the advice, man, for you real. Will, you will go to the next level if you go fast to the new shit. How long have you been following me? A couple years. You should have been on TikTok 18 months ago. Mm, I know. Don't fucking make that same mistake next because in 36 months, I'm going to say something and it, I'm telling you right to your fucking face, I'm going to be right. Jump the fuck in. I'm in. I'm in. Good I'm man. following Talk you, brother. To you soon. Take Thank care. you. Love. Bye-bye. Big shout out to Rhode Island. Dustin, what's good? What's up? <laughs> How we seeing? How we feeling with the numbers? Give me the updated numbers. Um, It's not looking too great. Okay, on well, t- nobody likes us Twitch. anymore. Nobody likes us anymore. <laughs> not on Twitch, at least. I. Well, so we tried changing some, some things up today just to s- kind of experiment mm-hmm. as far as because yesterday we were on the uh, talk shows and, or not yesterday, the other day, talk shows and podcasts category. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We changed it today to just chatting to see what would happen. Let me ask you a question. After who the fuck made that decision? After it completely crushed on the first day, who in their right mind decided, hey, Let's fuck with something that was fucking remarkable. Help me on this one, Dustin. Was it Tyler? Uh, was it you? It was you, both of us. So, so you and Tyler joined forces and created the fucking dipshit so, so, duo wait, 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 to wait, fuck wait, me up wait, on Twitch. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm reading the comments on Twitch and someone said, hey, you should try using the just chatting category instead because it's just a bigger category and then people, fans of Gary might catch it, catch it like out of, I guess if they're not following you. So I was like, okay. So I threw that suggestion out to Tyler. It's like, all right, let's try it and see what happens. And then we can go back and forth and I res- show, we can I, show. I respect, Gary. I respect, <laughs> I respect your uh Trying to be more like Gary G. Yeah, huh? I, listen, I like it. I like trying new shit. But I think, I, I don't like trying new shit on the second time after the first time went fucking bananas. Okay. You know, trying new shit is after, you know, is after Later. you've hit, yeah, let me, let me explain it. This is actually gonna help people. Trying yeah. new shit needs to happen when you've plateaued. Mm. We didn't plateau, we fucking had one day. True, true, true. Noted for the future. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Big shout out to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Hi guys. Hi Gary. Hi. Um, How are you? Good, I'm Sharm. I'm the editor in chief and co-founder of Average Socialite. And awesome. I'm Gerlene. I'm also an editor here in New York for Average Social, Social Life. <laughs> so, it's really um, nice to meet you, ladies. You too. Um, so I was a lawyer for 20 years. And about five years ago, um, I co-founded Average Social Life with my co-founder, CJ, in LA. Um, and uh, almost a year ago, exactly, I left law completely to focus on Average Social Life. 
Um, so now fast forward to today, um, we're all in quarantine and Average Socialite is a website that focuses on um, unique and exclusive events uh, across the country uh, with a focus in LA, New York and DC. So we're all in quarantine now and all of the big events that we usually cover like Coachella, um, you know, music awards, uh, shows and movie premieres, they've all obviously been canceled. Yes. So we were, one, you know, we were left with, you know, where does that leave us? And uh, CJ, my co-founder, is actually a pediatric nurse practitioner. So it was her idea to kind of um, bring, with all the traffic that we get to our website, to try to bring some information and useful um, things during coronavirus to our audience. And more, more specifically, um, we decided to start a, a, a page uh, that gives advice and information for healthcare workers and people on the front lines, um, like information about where they can get medical supplies and transportation and housing and all these things that all these wonderful mm -hmm. companies are offering people like free meals during their shifts and things like that. So okay. we've had a tremendous response to that. Um, we've built a really strong relationship with the healthcare community now mm -hmm. and with all of these brands that are supporting um, healthcare. And we've even reached out to a lot of our contacts and um, they're now also offering discounts or freebies um, for healthcare workers. My question to you is because you wear so many different hats. Um, you know, you do media, you do sports, you have your podcast and wine. People will come to you for one reason or another. Um, how do you get them to cross over to other content? Because eventually, uh, you know, things are going to hopefully go back to normal and we'll start covering events and going back to our original purpose. But we don't want to lose that relationship and want to keep adding value to those people, the new audience that we have. I would, uh, there's a couple things you could do. One, you should immediately mix in some of your normal content into it just to see how this new audience responds to it because people are multi-dimensional. Many of the people that are coming over for th this also enjoy the things that you cover day to day. And I think you, you know, obviously you're not gonna cover it from a event standpoint, but they're all, all these socialites are living it out on, on social media and there's absolutely things to cover and conversate around and there's all sorts of people like still dating in the shadows and things. There's all sorts of things you can cover. So I think there's that. And then number two, if it becomes meaningful enough, you basically do a push when things get back to normal and you do a hard right hook like to the prior thing and say, look, we're starting this Instagram account for all the people that came for this and you literally create it. You know, I, I have me, the human, but I'm I'm the orchestrator of setting something to Wine Text or to Vayner Sports or to the Sasha Group, and and what can end up happening is you as humans can do that from and I assume the account may be smaller or may not be I don't know but obviously the base might be there but more importantly you definitely if you're doing this all on average socialite need to do a hardcore for a week now, we're gonna push you all to this other place that we're here during this time for that, and right. then reset, and then have your small little group on this new thing you've created and see if that becomes a fruitful venture for you to continue to build on. Right, yeah, and we, we you know, halfway through, we kind of thought about it, and we added like a, a link for people to sign up for our newsletter to subscribe, so now we've collected like thousands of email addresses, so hopefully we can reach out back to those people that might Correct. have them. Correct, yeah. that's it. You just have to make that hard pivot, and everybody will be fine with it. You know, last night I posted, I'm posting out content right now on Instagram that, you know, that I know will underperform, but I want it to do the thing that I want it to do. And I think a lot of people struggle with posting something they know will underperform in likes, right? but is still on strategy. So a lot of times in this scenario, they won't want to do those like, hey, like just basic sign up for the, you know, like switch over, follow this. They know it won't do as well, but that's actually what you need to happen. And so doing the right thing for business strategy versus what's right for the algorithm is something a lot of people who are watching this need to learn. Yeah, we're yeah. just concerned because we want to make sure that the engagement is always there for the audience. And, and that's the problem. And because I, I totally get it, but you know, the, the engagement can, can go down if it's over on strategy to separate the audiences based on your situation. Right. I would be comfortable with five posts out of 10 posts be very strong call to actions to sign up for this new account, knowing that they would get a fourth of the likes that you're accustomed to, but you're gonna siphon the people over and that is the actual punchline. Got it. If people care about their aesthetic too much, you can fucking archive it. That's Nobody, true. You can, people also don't give a fuck about your aesthetic. Like it's all, <laughs> it's all feed. Like, so there's a lot of, you see where I'm going? There's sure. a lot of things people overthink and we, we let illusions become the thing we decide on instead of the reality of smart business practices. Right. Awesome. Right. Thank ladies. you so much. Take Thanks. care, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. Yep. So reading the comments again, they said actually, 
uh, Twitch decides who goes on the front page, so the category of, of didn't course, matter. I, I don't, I don't know anything. I did that part. <laughs> I don't know anything. Either. Clearly, let's keep going. Hi, Hi Gary. How are you? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, man. Love the bucket hat. Thank you so much. That's good. My question for you today is about communications and truth. I'd like to tell a quick story that leads me into it. I'm a second generation immigrant that from Chile to Norway, grew up there, a very dense environment, um, lots of caring about other people's opinions. <laughs> um, I moved out at a young age um, to create distance. So I've had the pleasure and freedom to do what I want for nine years now, tested a lot of shit. And um, I've come to a place in my life where I want to take my work ethic serious. I want to taste my sense of discipline and I want to get serious about my personal brand. Um, and you inspire me just by the way that you talk. So my question to you today um, is, what skills do I have to master to be able to communicate as truthfully as you, but at the same time as kindly, empathetically, and compassionately as you? Well, that's extremely flattering, my friend. Thank you. Um, I think self-confidence. I just really, you need to, you know, and I think the way you go there, brother, I think you need to, it's a really interesting answer. And just, first of all, you, you articulate super well. So I think you got a real shot. Thank I think some you. people just have a natural knack to communicate. Felipe, I think the thing that you need to think about is being comfortable with your shortcomings. You know, I think a part that people don't see enough of me in me and don't use it enough are things like me talking about being an atrocious student, me not being a great athlete, me, me struggling, like, like me not having fun in my twenties, you know, me, me not having the financial means since the family business was my family's to, yeah. to have to start over. Like it's the humility and kind of exposing. I think, I think the way you can be empathetic and compassionate, look, there's human traits. Some people are just born with that. Yeah. However, I, I have noticed and I genuinely believe that people that share their shortcomings are so much better, happier, and capable to navigate the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the biggest thing that probably will open you up to that is actually sharing with the world what you suck at. It's why I bring up Eight Miles so often. Yeah. Right, that last scene, I bring it up all the time. I was Love in the that theater. Movie. Yeah, I saw the, I saw the movie the day it came out. Eminem was at, at his height. And that last scene struck me in perpetuity because I yeah. understood what he was doing. Mm -hmm. which was, if I shit on myself, you have no leverage. And once I understand no, that. And then once nobody has leverage, you get happy. And once you get happy, you can share happiness. And yeah. Passion and kindness. So I think that's the answer. I also have, I also stay in my lane. Mm -hmm. One thing that I am very proud of is I talk about business and I talk mm -hmm. about human characteristics that come natural to me. I don't talk about healthcare. I don't talk about geopolitical I don't talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I don't talk about, you know, like, I don't talk about shit I don't know. Yeah. Like, people are like, you come off cocky. I'm like, I come off confident because I talk about shit I don't know. Yeah. You know? I think uh, I resonate to that. I've been posting content for about five years now, but it's been on and off. It hasn't been consecutively. And I feel like the way that I communicate has, like, created a little, like, a hard shell around the way that I speak to others. And it's like kind of defending something that I built up in an early young age when I first moved out, read a lot of self-help books and like kind of taught myself how to like myself in a way. Right. Of course. Um, you can. Yeah. And and I wanted to talk about that. Right. But it, it, it was like with a with an edge. You understand? With with a chip, with anger. Yeah. I totally probably. get it. And listen, I'm a chip, too. Like I went through a school system like, you know especially high school, like, you know, there was an underlining belief that like from the system, the school system, even some of my friends' parents that because I was bad at school, I couldn't win. Um, and that just, you know, that drove me, that drives me um, because I was so woke and thoughtful and understood the system was broke for me. Um, and I see that in a million different places. Um, I, I think you need to articulate that anger. I think you need yeah. to make. I think you need to make a piece of content where you're crying about what your mom and dad did, or who you know, or whatever. <laughs> you know, I think I think that will take a lot of heat out of the tone. 
you yeah. know, to your point, I think that, see, I'm not angry. And so I might be a little Jersey street. I might yeah. be, co- I'm competitive. Um, I'm, com- I have conviction, mm-hmm. but, but I think your question and uh, you, you, by talking here, you help me give you a better answer. I think the difference you're seeing in me and you is I don't have anger. Yeah. And I think the way you get that anger out is by exposing that shadow. Mm. That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. I have tried. Um, You've tried putting it out and flat out saying the truth to the world? I feel like that's the only thing I do. <laughs> so you told everybody that and you still, it's the, it didn't work for you. AKA. I feel like I got the truth part in. I don't feel like I have the compassionate, empathetic, kindly part in. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, there's some real truth to like, listen, you, but you also have like great hair, right? And an, epic, and an epic smile, right? So like, <laughs> so like, so like, you know, there is a little bit to the DNA game. Like, you know, it, it's not like in seventh, when I was seven or nine, my mom was like, be kind. She, yeah. was, a, she was a guidance of kindness, mm-hmm. but it was in me. It's not like yeah. I read a book at 18 that said kindness is the unlock. Right, like, oh, right. like, you know, there is a little bit of a DNA game. Yeah. But, um, but like, look. But isn't that in all of us in a way? Yeah, but then our circumstances take over. You know, like first we start with DNA points and then there's moldability of our environment and our, and our parenting and our circumstances. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why everyone's so quite unique. But I think, I think recognizing it, even this conversation, it, yeah gives me so much uncomfortable optimism because there's a self-awareness that you're deploying here that many people just don't, you know, there are so many people I know that are just uncomfortably delusional and the only person they're tricking is themselves. Yeah. You know, like, you know, people see through it. And so, you know, I think- I felt myself being in that box sometimes. That makes sense. It, you know, it, it, that was your subconscious and the fact that it's now in your conscious means that now you're in practice mode. Like these muscles are a lot better than they used to be, but they would, they're not as good as they would have been if I started at 18 instead of 38. Yeah. You're so young, you just might be in a very early part of the, of the journey. Yeah. yeah. You know? I'm being impatient. I gotta give myself more time to grow. Which is amazing because most times people are impatient for like a thing to like flex which is like yeah. a poison, you, yeah. you know, a car or, you know, a hoodie or like a vacation or new home. You're being impatient for your ambition to a kinder, happier place. That's fucking, I have admiration for that. That's ad, that I, I have admiration for you. I That's just amazing. think I, what I don't want you to do is beat yourself up to yourself about being a bad guy. You need to, the best way to be empathetic is to be empathetic to yourself first. Thank you. You know what This I mean? is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I 100% do. I think, um, look, I have a ton of shortcomings, but my ability to not judge myself starts the process of me being kind to others. Yeah. The reason people are struggling so much out here and everyone's so upset is because we are in the golden era of judgment. Everybody's mm-hmm. got a hot take on everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody can and, share their opinion. Correct. And so, and unfortunately, social media exposes people. It, nobody's been changed by Twitter or Twitch or Instagram. Everyone's been exposed. And so yeah. the reason people are struggling with judgment from others, you know, hate or things of that nature, is because they themselves are judging. That makes sense. And so, you know, I, I think that there's a lot there. Yeah. Start with yourself. Like, don't beat yourself up. Like, what did we all do? We just, we're, we're the output of our, our circumstances. And then this is how it, I got myself to 400 trillion to one. Like you could, be, you could be upset about, you know, who you are. You're not tall enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not, you're not good enough. You're, but, but just even realizing that the, the likelihood of becoming a human is 400 trillion to one, you know, that, you know, that whole, like, you're a miracle, like cliche that like a grandma would say is like unbelievably true. Like, yeah like you get hit by lightning six times and win a lot of four times and still that's more common than fucking being alive and then once you kind of go there once you sit in that stew for a year 
then you're like, fuck it, let's go. Like, fuck yeah. it. Like, no matter what my shortcoming is. Like, yeah. you know, and there's so many, and then look for inspiration from others. You see so many people that are disabled, chronically ill, and are optimistic. And then you see people have nothing but blessings and will always find something that's wrong. Because yeah. that was their DNA and that was their parenting. That was with their environment. And if you're a complainer and you're watching right now, you need to change your circle. You need to start hanging out with people that smoke your bullshit out. You need to become accountable. They're, like, like people that complain think that other people control shit. And there's unbelievable injustice in the world. I mean, there's crazy shit. Racism, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, religious persecution, sexism. Um, but the reality is, is like, you're, take it. Like, take that, knowing that, and take your own control and, like, move out of the country you don't like anymore. St d divorce the spouse you don't like anymore. Like, like quit the job you don't like anymore. It, it, humility, kindness, empathy, patience, these ingredients together leads to happiness. Yeah. I That makes complete sense to me. And I feel like I have created an image of my optimism. I feel like the the shell that I've made is to protect me from negativity. I totally um, understand. Um what you need to do what you need to do is create a world where you can easily take it in and reform it, you know? Yeah. That makes total sense. You know, to me, I'm not trying to sh protect myself from it. I've created a machine that takes it and regurgitates out flowers. Mm. Got it? I love that. That's why that's why my shit's sustainable. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to run away from it because it exists at scale. Yeah. I, I've learned how to take it and reform it and pop it out different. It's why I talk about being, you know, compassionate and kind in the face of anger. It's why I talk about empathy when somebody says, You suck, you're a charlatan, you you're a snake oil salesman, you're not good, you're overrated. I go into, man, could you imagine living a life where you're pushing people down on the internet? Wow, that's some pain. Not, oh, I'm sad, maybe I am. I don't fucking believe you. But yeah. it also means I don't believe you when people tell me you're the goat. Yeah. See, once you don't believe them, you have to not believe them both ways. Too many people yeah. don't believe their haters, but love their compliments. Mm -hmm. People, People's need for compliments here is why they're so hurting. It's why so many attractive people are in such insecure places. They're so accustomed to that positive reinforcement that when they don't get it in the other way, they crumble because their their self-worth is from the feedback of the positive reinforcement. When that converts to negative reinforcement, they fold. Yeah. I'm the rev you know, I'm thankful for this parenting yeah. circumstance. Look, I'm not saying mm -hmm. I'm special. This is just how it happened. I'm yeah. the reverse. It's why peer pressure didn't exist for me in high school. I'm the reverse. Mm -hmm. I don't hear you when I say you say I'm a dick, and I don't hear you when I when you say I'm the goat. And so, like, it works when because you have your own self worth established just, in yourself. You shed your own light on it. I'm in a cocoon, bro. I'm in yeah, a fucking, I'm in a cocoon. And I get what's your best advice to be able to achieve that? To be in your own head, <sighs> recognizing it's it's a possibility, hmm. knowing um, it's possible. Knowing it's that. possible is a great starting point, and then and then practice. You know, practice like truly going against your own intuitions and self muscle memories when somebody's mean to you instead of going back at them, just like gritting it out and saying, I feel bad, I'm sorry. Like things yeah. that, doing shit that's uncomfortable mm -hmm. until it becomes comfortable. That makes sense to me. You know, and so yeah, I just think that, um, I just think that there's, it's, it's practical positivity, right? It's like, why not choose happiness and positivity, but not at the cost of delusion. You can't be with yeah. your homies and be like, everything's gonna be okay, and sitting around and doing nothing. Yeah. So you have to be practical, like deeply practical, but why not choose positivity? Why not choose optimism? It's why I have such unique hot takes on COVID, right? I've been getting a ton of uh, emails about how much my statement about if COVID started 90 days earlier, Kobe Bryant would be alive. That really fucking hit people because the Kobe thing hit people and they know I'm telling the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. If COVID yeah. was 100 days earlier, Kobe Bryant would be alive and most likely live for another 60 years. You it's know, insane. if you look at the traffic accident data around the world, every day the traffic accidents and you layer that 
to what's happened over the last 60 days as the world's been shut down, you know, you can start debating if it's more lives have been saved. Yeah. Now, now that's the macro. That doesn't mm-hmm. make the person that lost their, you know, grandmother because of COVID feel any better. But yeah. what that person doesn't know is they might have been the person in the car that got hit. Like mm-hmm. life's complicated. So yeah, why, you know, per- nobody's right. Yeah, it's all perspective. So nobody's right. So why not choose happy and optimism? Yeah. Why not choose it? Like why mm-hmm. not choose it? Why not fight to learn how to choose it? I love that. Thank you so much. I got you, my guy. Keep pushing. I will. I believe you. See you soon. See you. Let's keep it going. Hi. Hi, Danielle. How are you? I'm losing my mind right now. Why? Because that's the fact of talking to you. But thank you. I'm okay. Good. I <laughs> so, love your hair. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, so I guess what I kind of wanted to talk to you about was something that I haven't heard talked about much on here. Um, so I have, I suffered from kidney failure. I'm currently on dialysis. Um, right now it's three days a week, trying to work on doing it at home so that I can have more time to do other things. Um, but my problem is, is I have this drive to, do things, I guess. I'm super creative. I like to do art. I like to make videos. I like to do pictures. I'm all over the place, I guess. And that's, everybody... That's, Danielle, that's good. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you know that? Or do wants... people, tell you, people tell you that's not good? Yeah. Everybody basically makes me feel like I need to pick something so that I can start making money because I have three kids um, and I'm not really financially successful um i'm on disability right now so that's kind of where i get my money but are you um, are you let's let's take out covid disability right now are you happy like this is a very interesting question right let me explain yeah because happy's it's heavy it's a heavy question right Mm -hmm. because because there's a balance between you know you got to provide right you but in that sense you're creative You've, yes. you've got a health situation that's not going to allow you to go ham 15 fucking hours a day, seven days a week, because then that's not going to work out. Yeah. So I think this gets into, you know, practical. This goes back to the last question. There's a level of practicality. I think there's a 50-50 game for you. And what I mean by that is I, I, I've been really excited about this new idea I have around strategic jobs. So... Mm-hmm. I think when I look at you, I'm like, oh, okay, you just need a fucking epic job and you need, we need to put all our energy together to find you that epic job at, that really is fun enough because it's created by nature, Yeah, pays some sort of foundational bills for the plus three, right? Yeah. And still gives you the ability because it's a nine to five to when you're feeling up to it, to do mm-hmm. stuff at 9 to 11 p.m., whether that's drawing or coloring or graphics or music. I, yeah. think, I think the biggest thing you have to put all your energy towards, and honestly, I'm super happy to help you, is to find the core ju- Where do you live? In Portland, Oregon. <laughs> but we, we've been trying to move. We've been in this house for five years. We live in a super small house. Like, it's barely 850 it. square feet, maybe. Um, but two bedroom, and so I sleep with two of my kids every night totally to try and, you know, make it work. But um, I've tried, I haven't had a job, like, really ever, okay. mostly due to my health. So when I go apply at jobs and I try to get jobs places, I don't have really anything on my resume. I totally understand. People look Let down me, on me. Let's and, talk about it because I have a funny feeling this community is about to help you. Talk to me about what you do. I, well, I want to what do you do, make uh well i can make anything i make pictures i want to make videos i want to talk to people i enjoy talking with people. are you are you capable of making social media content yeah i try <laughs> um i have super bad insecurities which i'm trying to get over been dealing with i've watched you for like the last five years 
So I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on all that stuff. I'm trying to talk to people and put myself out there, even though it's super hard for me because I get super bad anxiety. Um, But I'm trying. I have really hard time. Because you value their opinions of you. Yeah, I guess. I worry that people aren't going to, because everywhere that I've gone, I feel like when I've tried to get jobs, I've tried to apply to Vayner Media, for example, but I don't have a good resume. And um, the good news is, Vayner Media is not a resume game. Vayner Media <laughs> is just a volume game. We get so many yeah. applications. But when you apply for Vayner Media, did you apply for design, being a designer? I apply. I okay, I've for everything for like five years. I've literally applied for like I everything. Don't know how many jobs I've emailed you? Or so, Dustin, emailed- Dustin, do me a favor. Connect here and let's get Andy and D-Rock and the team to talk to her and see, let's let her make some shit and let's see if she's good or bad. Okay. And here's the good news on that. If you're quote unquote bad to make you feel safe, Mm -hmm. we're not gonna be like, oh, you're bad, see a Portland girl. We're gonna be like, hey, (laughs) hey, this is what you wanna work on? Because I tell you right now, there's a thousand people right now that are probably DMing your, is your Instagram down here? Yeah, I have like 200 something followers. I don't keep track because I, you know, I say don't focus on numbers, so I try not to do that. But good for you. That um, definitely is a very good idea. On the flip side, having a community is good. However, you know that plays out. Let's just see. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it's my anxiety always gets the best of me, and then I talk to like professional business people, and then they don't take me seriously because I don't have like the credits. Or did you, you know, make this? Um, I recolored that off of a off of Spark Post. So I have the full Adobe Creative Cloud. So I like to play on it and mess around with it all the time. That I actually just recolored, but everything else on my Instagram I made. I drew. I made everything this? else. I drew that. Okay, I can save you a lot of time. You're good enough. <laughs> so here, here, here's what I'm, you know. We're in a very interesting time. I was only working with people that. Um, came to came to New York and sat outside my office. You've seen the vlog, like you know yeah. how we like it. I like fucking the whole Rat Pack together. Like I love that <laughs> shit. Obviously, yeah. the world's different now, and there's opportunity. We've started talking about doing stuff with freelancers at scale around the world. Mm-hmm. Two things: one, I'm gonna have Tyler and Dustin's listening right now. I'm gonna have Tyler and Andy talk to you about things that you can do for VaynerMedia or 1:37 p.m. or Pure Wow, right? Okay. Number two, okay. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, on that single piece of content, I'm completely convinced that people are DMing you right now on your account and telling you that they'll pay you 500 bucks for a post, 200 bucks for a post, 50 bucks for a post. Like, I genuinely believe that you will have real business in your Instagram right now because so many people that follow me are business people. You're up to 348, so you're moving up. Um, Thanks. Are business people. So you made you made this too, this this video? that I'm watching right now? Yeah, that's a video of my daughter, yeah. (laughs) Um, This you? Yeah, I made that. (laughs) Let me give you a huge piece of advice. Okay. You need to post things like the two things I showed you. Mm -hmm. You made this too? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, listen to me. You need to make this. Yeah, I made that. All right, listen to me. (laughs) You need to post three times a day things like the last four things I've showed you. Okay. I'm completely convinced that there's things that we can do together. I think we can do some stuff. But I'm telling you right now, even way more interesting, I'm completely convinced you're at 446. You're going up fast right now because what's happening is there's a lot of people in my community who have ideas but they don't know how to make. So you're you're a blessing to them. They're great business people probably better Mm -hmm. business people than you. You're a better (laughs) artist than them. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a very funny feeling. Yeah, I'm not good at the business side of things at all. (laughs) All right, so let me me help you then. So the people that are DMing you right now, and I'm sure there's a bunch that are asking you to make them a piece of content and you'll get on a Zoom with them or call. Like, don't take, don't do any content for less than $150 a post, right? Like, just see what that see what that feels like. Like, you only need four or five customers. You know, you know, some people. You know, so like to me, 
your content creation is good enough for sure. Because okay. I see a lot of it for sure to help a ton of small businesses. Okay. And I just really genuinely think that this is the moment that where your your world changes. <laughs> wow. Well, my mind is blown. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I've been super hesitant because I try and put my work out there, but I never get like very many reactions or you responses. Because you have a small base. I didn't. Ha- I didn't get a lot of reactions either. But I kept posting Wine Library TV more and more. I kept putting out tweets more and more, and then that yeah. eventually helped me build your base. Right? Your base is yeah. du- your base is now doubled because of the serendipity of this moment in five <laughs> minutes. That's how life works. Somebody yeah. else, somebody else is going to repost something from you, and it's going to be ten times bigger than that. You know, it's a, it's, you're, you're just good enough. Okay, <laughs> it's hard for me to uh, admit that, I guess, to myself. But it's like I also don't want people to feel like I just want like their money because I don't want to do that, and I also want like well, but you I need, like what but you listen, do. But you, but you need money. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay to listen. That every one of those posts that I just saw is worth one hundred fifty dollars. Every one. Okay. And if you, God forbid, God willing, God forbid, as a slang term for God willing, get six people, just six people here right now saying I want one, it's a thousand dollars. Yeah. It's like I want to do. Like I like what you talk about and leaving a legacy. And it's like I don't so much care. You can't about- leave a legacy if you're out of business. Right. Like, right? Like, like you can't leave, right. like, do you know how much easier it's going to be for you to leave a legacy if you're making $4,000 a month because you're doing 30 of those posts for people and now you, your family can move and you can breathe a little bit, which all of a sudden is going to help your brain, which is then going to help your kidney. Like, you're going to, you're going to be able to leave a legacy. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that if you're not in a stable spot. Yeah. I've just felt stuck for like so long. I get it. And I'm that's, like, I don't know what to do. I was well, like, I'm good news. I think I understand. Moving. <laughs> well, well, that's why. That's why. That's why I'm here right now. I'm gonna unfucking stuck you. <laughs> I'm giving you the blueprint. I'm giving you the audience, and I'm telling you what to do. So, you know, if I didn't tell you the 150 part, we would have hung up, and then you would have all these things, and you would have been crippled because it's not what you do. Yeah. It's yeah. no different than if you asked me to put together a clock right now. Mm. I'm not fucking handy out here. <laughs> If you're like, Gary, hang those curtains. I'm like, I don't know what. <laughs> no different than you not knowing to ask for 150. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like. It's hard for me to ask for money, I guess, because it, it makes me feel bad. I don't know. I don't come from money. I don't come. I don't know. It's... No, no. Let, let's stay here. This is a, the reason I'm staying here with you is because you're helping a lot of people right now. Yeah. There's a lot of people like you. Let me, let's play a different game. Money okay. doesn't have to be bad. Let me, let me say this. When you ask somebody for $150, right, for that thing, mm-hmm. they don't have to say yes. And when they say, yeah. fuck you, $5, you don't have to say yes. Okay. You, you do understand that the, that content, when you talk to somebody for 50, first of all, it's not just two seconds. You have to talk to these people for 10 minutes so they can tell you what they want. You're going to have to go on their page and figure out their business. You're putting your talents to work. Yeah. I've made things for people like for free because I know you say do a bunch of stuff for free. So I've made like logos and tried to do things like that for people for free. And free is great when you can afford it. But right now I don't like the feeling I have. I don't want you to do that. I want you to go through a path of $150. Listen, I get get paid $150,000 to give one speech. (laughs) Right, and I lose my mind. (laughs) And and guess what? I lose my mind. And at first, and there's been times where I'm like, "Man, that's insane. That's more money than I made in the first four years of my career." You know. Yeah. And but but the reality is, I've learned because this is how it works. That's because the venue and the promoters make that money back and then some. Because I've worked my face off for my whole life to have an audience that converts when I speak on stage. Right. You know, people like athletes make too much. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. They've worked super hard and people watch it and then brands pay for it and tickets sell because of it. They're making yeah. too little. They're yeah. making too little. Yeah. 
And that's how I feel about you right now. Like you've worked you, your whole life to be creative. You are naturally creative. Even your physical appearance is wildly creative. You are creative. <laughs> Thank you. And, and so, I just don't. I don't want to be like super rich. That's not my don't goal be or rich. anything. But Who it's like fuck? I want to have enough money to be taken care of and to take care of my kids. Listen to me. Listen to me. Humility is a superpower. However, humility to a fault where it hurts you and the people that you love is a problem. Yeah. And and thank God, I mean, very honestly, I, we've done this a lot. A lot of times people aren't good enough. Like a lot of times I look at their accounts, I'm like, oh, all right, Cameron. All right, Dustin, let's go to the next, you know, like, you know, it's, it's a bad spot because you know that it's not worth it. And I'd rather, but, yeah. but you have enough in you. I can see it. I try and throw myself into like what I'm doing and I've self-taught myself everything. I have, like I said, I have the whole Adobe look at, Creative look at, Cloud. So. Look at Coach, put up Coach J Fitness Studio says $150. There are people in my area charging $3,500 for a post. Yeah, that's just crazy to me. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would mean, feel bad. I don't know. I don't know why it makes me feel bad. Because you're take, insecure. Because you don't value yourself enough. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> But you know what? You know what? You know the process to starting to feel better about yourself is to start doing this. So cute. Start doing this. <laughs> start doing this and feeling that that person paid you one hundred fifty dollars. You delivered something. They write you an email and says this is incredible. Can you do three more? All of a sudden, you go from this to you know. Yeah. You, what is, you, ironically, the thing you need is to charge money and get that positive feedback to build you back up. You're just in a vicious circle. Yeah, I've been in kind of like an up and down depression for like the last five years. And then my health kind of shot me down when I started having to do dialysis. And, of course, uh, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. The brain is the operating system. Look, look, look at what Roberto Blake just said. And Roberto, Roberto has done a great job building himself up and th like this is a big deal. I've talked to him a few times on Twitter as well as like I've talked to Dustin and Zane a few times on Twitter too and I try and interact with everybody as much as I can. And You're doing a great yeah. job. You've got the talent. You're interacting. Now we just have to push you over the top to get comfortable for asking for money and delivering. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, take it from the horse's mouth. You have enough in you. Okay. Too What's many, your opinion? Too many, peop too many people that are creative were taught by their parents and their circumstance that money is bad. Yeah, I'm not really one of those people who like have my parents. So I don't, um, I don't know, not to get into anything, but like I come from a bad childhood. And so I'm- No kidding. It's just me and my fiance here with our kids and we don't that, got nobody that's else. Good. Well, good news. But, you don't fucking need anybody else. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, that, that, those family photos are sweet as fuck. You got, <laughs> thank you. You have way more than most people. There are plenty of people who do not have fiance or three kids. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm incredibly thankful to even to have them. And so that's it. That's why I want to show my kids. Like, I want to show them that, like, so let's show. You know, mom can be successful. Of course you can. can do but you need, but you need to get over yourself on your insecurities about charging money for your art. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you think I'm spending my time doing here? Yeah. I'm not here for my health. <laughs> I'm here because you represent hundreds of thousands of people that will watch this video over the next 10 years. People don't think about content properly. You know, we're having this moment right now with tens of thousands of people watching on live. Then, then it's gonna go on Instagram and that's gonna get its views. Then it's gonna go on YouTube and it's gonna get those views. But somebody's gonna watch this video in 13 years on YouTube or Twitch or Schmitch or Kowitch or whatever ends up happening and this single video is going to change your life. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's and it if you want to be good to other people, it's your responsibility now to execute on this moment so that when they look you up, they can see that you flourished. Yeah. And I've been trying to practice with like I know you say document over create and I know I'm highly creative, so I get stuck in that and I No, no, like, no, 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 no. I say document don't create document over creating for people that can't create. Yeah. You, my dear, can create. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Yeah. You can fucking create. Yeah. 
I just Let's, I want to do so many things. I feel like it's so like, do, and I learn you know how, best you know, by you know, doing. You know so. how you do so many things? How? By doing one thing and building on top of it. Okay. Do me a huge favor. Start a business now. Okay. Right this second. Okay. Uh, you're going to hang up and you're going to have an ungodly amount of DMs. Okay. And go by, one by one, one by one, right? So wait a minute. Did we have the wrong Instagram before? I see some, compl- no, no, I, we got the right one. Um, that's, that's, it's right, a, that's right, we got yeah, it, okay. we got it. Um, everybody, that's the Instagram, instagram.com slash that if you wanna share it in your Twitter or Twitch or YouTube right now to make it linkable. Let's all rally and drive it. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you know this, but check this out. You're at 9.50. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen to me. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> Listen to me, better than that, better than that, you're, you've got real DMs and I'm promising you, you probably have 20, let me guess here, you probably have 45 DMs right now that say $150. They're literally ready to pay you. Okay. You, you probably, probably, probably made five to $10,000 just right now. Okay. What you need to That's do is, crazy. You need to not do any for less than 150. You have to promise me this. Okay. And you have to say yes, and you have, do you have a PayPal? Yeah. Great. You know, you're on your way, kid. <laughs> yeah, I turned 29 on the 16th this month, so I've been having super bad anxiety because I'm like, oh, I'm getting old. Let me say it one more time. <laughs> you're on your way, kid. <laughs> I worked in a liquor store when I was 29. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate you talking with me. You're going to be very busy is... for next month. Well, I'm very happy because I've been, I've had so much time on my hands. I'm like, I don't know what to make or what to create. So. You, you, you take these DMs, you see who's offering the most money because there's some people that might say 500 bucks or 800 bucks. You get on Zoom with them or Google Hangout. You talk to them what they want for a 15 minute, 30 minute consultation. You hang up, you make it. You have them PayPal you 20 to 50% of the money. This is going to be hard for you. You tell them you need a deposit. This is going to be hard for you. You're scared to ask for money, let alone a deposit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you need to stick with me here and you need to rewatch this video over and over in a week if you are not doing it. You have to ask for a deposit. You have okay. to ask for a deposit. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it. It's going to I've been trying. I've been offering to, you know, I've been trying to start my business, but I wasn't sure Everyone's like, oh, you should do photography because you're so good at photography, which I enjoy it and I like it. You are. I see it. I see it. Right now, you can't do that. Yeah. So you need to wait to do that. You'll do that later. And by then, you'll learn how to charge. But right now, listen to me. Right now, you have literally $5,000 sitting in your inbox. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I'm going to assume based on what I'm hearing, that's a big fucking deal. Yeah. (laughs) We live paycheck to paycheck, so. <laughs> literally, literally, this is your opportunity to not. Because what's amazing, yeah. what's amazing is that three or four of those people are probably gonna do more than one time with you because you're gonna be their person. Yeah, okay. This is hard. Now, as far as like, what, one of my ups on like creating a business is, is like, I don't, I get hung up on a name, and I know you Names say like mean, not to do that and everything. Don't do that. They don't That's mean a, anything. It doesn't mean anything. But, McDonald's yeah. sounds like an Irish pub, not a fucking the greatest you know chain restaurant in the history of capitalist America. Yeah, the but I is, hate the, my right? first name. I've I've like never liked so my change name, it. Danielle. Like, so I've never it, liked Danielle. it. So I just call. I've been calling my business, or decided to call my business, like. Christine Creative. You, you, know who else, creative. You, know, you know who else hated their name? I don't know. Who? Prince. Uh, yeah. So change your fucking name. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? I mean, I don't know. Most people just call me something else. Like most people what do most people D call you? Or... So change your fucking name to D. Okay. <laughs> D Designs. There you go. D-E-E. Just like Gary V-E-E. D E E designs. There you go. That's your company's name. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> okay. What else? 
Um, so as far as back under the whole like documenting thing, just because I also do get messages from people from like a health standpoint, people wanting to talk to me about what I'm going through because I'm of young and dealing with dialysis. I go in my dialysis Hey, Dustin, center real quick. And- I apologize. I know this is important. Can you just check if DEE Designs is available on Instagram? Because then we'll help Probably her. Probably she shouldn't have said that because now that someone's going to steal it. Somebody's <laughs> going to steal it in here that's going to transfer. Nobody steal it so we can transfer it to her if it's available. Go ahead, D. D- e- go ahead, D. So oh, yeah. Go ahead. People want to talk to you. Um, so it's like I'm, I go into my dialysis center and everybody in there is way older than I am. I'm the youngest person in there. And so lots of people always want to ask me questions or what's wrong. Why, with me. why are you here? Yeah. And things like that. And I've thought about documenting just to like talk to people because I do enjoy I talking to people and, I love and trying to help where I can. But it's like, I don't, but as far as documenting, I want to like try to document my life because I like, I love watching everyone on YouTube who does that. Um, okay. But I don't want to put my kids and everything. So don't. I but, don't. I don't put my kids in But they're always anything. with me. So they're always go with out, me. Go outside. 20%. You know. Okay. Go fucking outside. Or send them outside. Okay. <laughs> you, got an epic, you, got your, you, you got your man. Let him hold him down for 13 seconds while you okay. make a clip. <laughs> Listen okay. to me. Excuses aren't valuable. Yeah. Yep. I know. I just need to make and do. I know. <laughs> and I'm trying. I need to get over my insecurities. insecurities. <laughs> Let me tell you how you can get over your insecurities. By, by charging all these people $150 or more for design and feeling that affirmation of creating success for you and your family. Okay. I promise yeah. you it will work. It's where I found my affirmation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was bad at and that's what I've been searching for. It's like I just want to have like a purpose. Of like, this. This. You know. I put it on a fucking silver platter for you. If you don't eat it, I'm going to fly to Portland and punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Even he thought that was funny. <laughs> and that's your man. That's my husband. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, 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 don't miss this spot. What's your husband's name? Ben. Ben, get in here. What's up, hey, brother? It's good to see How's you. How's it going? Really well, Ben. Don't don't miss this moment. It's a real moment. Like there's literally seven thousand dollars in her direct messages right now. Oh, I'll support, push her. I, I believe you, but but support her because she's obviously got all the other variables. So oh, this yeah. this is not about pushing. This is about balancing through this, right? Not like hey babe, you can do it, or hey babe, you got to finish another one. This is more like hey, at your own pace, you got this. If it takes you four months to get through all this, that'll be fine too. That's support versus push. Do you understand? Yeah, yep, yeah, I hear you. She needs that. I'm here for her. I know, bro. I'll support you, babe. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great day. I love you too. Thank all you right. so much, Gary. You're welcome. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Tea with Gary V, Dustin. Best show on the earth. It's a, it's a different fucking thing. I'm gonna really have to figure out how to do it when things go back to normal. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. I mean, we could pretty much do the same thing, like just ask Gary V style, but then just have a good camera for you in the this in your just, office. This is just different. I don't know. Awesome, thank you, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I get out of here, today is the single most exciting day in wine tech's history. Tough transition from that last one, but I need to do it because it's gonna be the greatest. Um, Please, please, please listen to me carefully. Um, if you're on Wine Text, you already know where I'm going because we've been promoting it on email and on text like crazy because it's true. Today's Wine Text is, in my honest opinion, and I think you guys know me, the single best deal that we've ever put out. It's, um, it's a $50, $60 wine. I think it's like $62 on wine.com and it's going to be under $20 a bottle. It's from Napa. It's so ridiculous that I can't even, I can't even. Um... We lost Gary, one second. Like it's so ridiculous that I left. Like it's so ridiculous that I left. Um, 
by the way, I saw somebody say violence isn't the answer. But I'm not flying to Portland punching anybody. I'm not punching a man in the face, let alone a woman. Just relax. We're having fun. Um, wine text. It is going to be crazy today. And if you buy wine, please, if you buy wine at all, please sign up for wine text right now and uh, get ready because in two hours it goes off. The greatest deal of all time. Every, like, knowing that it's $19 and change and knowing a lot of you buy $10 and $12 wines and get $8 value, but this is $19 and change and it's $70 value, it's crazy. And every, there's a lot of you on wine text. Please do me a favor. This would mean a lot to me, actually. If you can text one person, everybody, just one person, text one person the winetext.com URL right now and say they should sign up. If you've got a real wine friend in your life, a boss, a, a friend, a, you know, just if you've got a, a wine homie, if every single, yes, yesterday's wine text was legit. K. Nixon, today's wine text takes a shit on yesterday's offer. Like a shit. That's how insane this is. So if you, uh, if you have wine friends, it would mean the world to me if you can, uh, if you can, uh, text winetext.com to them and say, hey, today's offer's crazy. Sign up before noon Eastern. Um, so you mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. I'll see you tomorrow. And if you're not signed up for the podcast, in case Tea with Gary V doesn't continue post-COVID, the podcast, I think, is the real alternative. That morning boost, so many work out with it, so many walk the dog with it. That morning boost, I think, is right there with the podcast. So please uh, check it out. I realize a lot of you that watch Tea with Gary V aren't signed up for my podcast. That makes me sad. Here's what you're missing out on. No, you, you like helped me so much. Thank you, bro. And like, you know, navigating like it's all mindset. You're preaching. Like when I when I entered college, I had such a bad mindset. Yeah. Because I was like, you know, I don't really want to be here. Like, yeah. I just want to work. Yeah. But like listening to the podcast every day, having like positivity in my ears, has really just like helped me along. Gary, if the mindset has been skewed, how can you bring it back? And I answered with, by surrounding yourself with people who have the mindset you aspire to. Mold, and I mean mold, your mindset by what you consume and with whom you consume it. If you think your life is shit, your life is shit. Keep listening to more of my content. You need fucking positivity coming through your ears. When fucking all that negativity's come in your head, put your fucking headphones in and listen to positivity. If you can't move out yet, put shit in your ears. You walk in, put the fucking headphones on in your house, close your door, and fucking listen. You can listen while you're driving. You can listen while you're traveling. You can listen while you're working out. You can listen while you're walking the dog. Like, find your shit. Like, don't listen to the fucking the people that shit on you. Like, get in your own head. Put positivity around you. Drop loser friends. Like, that negativity, that you're hearing, you gotta get that the fuck out of your life. You need to put your fucking ear pods in and listen to positivity 24 seven and get you through that shit, you understand? When your surroundings are shit, your insides gotta be positive. The fact that you're even here means you're fucking halfway home.